All right, today we're talking augmented reality and robots. Okay, so what got me into programming in the first place was not just my mom always nagging me to do something with my life, but rather I was always interested in robotics. So after succumbing to these societal pressures, the first actual programming project I did outside of doing homework in school was this little guy right here. Good morning, Matthew. You have five emails to read. The local temperature in Pittsburgh is just above 40 degrees, so wear something warm today. Really, I just wanted an excuse to 3D print something, but fast forward a couple months and I got an internship here locally at a robotics company called I Am Robotics. They made piece picking robots for warehouses. This is where I got introduced to Unity. They wanted me and my friend Chris, who basically taught me everything I know, fucking noob, to make a Unity app that would allow warehouse operators to kind of track, monitor, and interact with the robots as they move throughout the warehouse. I promise, I am going somewhere with this story. Uh, what amazed me about these robots was the fact that they had no sensors at all. They navigated strictly with computer vision. And they used to always talk about how valuable it would be if they could put the robot in an area and it would just map the whole environment itself. So if we think about this in the context of the AR cloud, that's gonna be way more useful in the realms of like robotics and autonomous vehicles. Now, I don't know the first thing about mapping areas digitally from scratch, but I do know a couple of augmented reality SDKs that might be able to help us out. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know I have serious project ADD and I don't like spending too much time on any one thing. But I thought in this case, if we had a robot with simply four wheels and an Arduino board that could drive around an iPhone, I thought we could do some pretty interesting things. So to make this robot, you're gonna need four geared DC motors and some kind of chassis. There are some pre-built chassis you can buy online, but mine is just some 3D printed random scraps that I had. Next, you need an ESP8266 Node MCU. This little guy is like $7 on Amazon. It can run Arduino code and it has a Wi-Fi module so we can send packets of information to and from Unity. These messages can be sent to your Unity editor running on your computer, or they can be sent to any Unity app running on Android or iOS. To connect the motors and the Arduino board, we will use an L298N dual H bridge. This, among other things, allows us to spin the motors in different directions so our robot can go anywhere. Uh, this thing can take up to 12 volts and has an onboard voltage regulator, which outputs 5 volts, so that's perfect for powering our Arduino board. All the connections should look something like this. It's dead simple. Once everything is connected up, you just need to find a way to mount your phone and it should be all set to go. So the Arduino code is also dead simple. I didn't want to have to keep uploading sketches, so uh, the Arduino code simply listens for packets and turns the motors on or off. All the logic as far as how long the motors are on for is handled in Unity. To get this thing connected to your network, just put in your network name and password and upload the code to your Arduino board. When you open up the serial monitor to 115200 baud, you will see its IP address get printed out. Copy this down because we'll need to put it into Unity later. Now that our robot is set up, let's jump into Unity. I put this project up on GitHub, so I will link to it in the description below. But this project has three scenes that run on our phone. The first two scenes use Vuforia, so they will work on Android and iOS. But the room mapping scene uses ARKit 1.5 because I wanted the vertical plane detection, so that one will only work on iOS. Now, this first scene has really nothing to do with AR, but I could not resist the temptation to drive this thing around with a video feed. Now, I wasn't fully committed to doing this, but I found this absolute legend on Stack Overflow. He basically put all the code that I needed in his answer. So if you look on the AR camera, the server script is what takes the video feed from Vuforia and it streams it to the computer via TCP. The controller scene is what receives the video stream and also allows you to use the arrow keys to control the robot. So before you can use this, make sure your phone and computer are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Go to the video client game object and put in your phone's IP address there. Now go to the keyboard input game object and put in your node MCU's IP address in the send message script. Now this scene is a little bit finicky, so in order for it to work, you need to first start the camera scene on your phone. And then once it's already running, press play on the controller scene in the editor, and you should be able to drive this thing around. 
The quality is super low for performance purposes, but you could bump it up in the server script of the camera scene if you wanted to. The next scene is the tracking scene. This scene uses Vuforia's user-defined targets so you can create a trackable object at runtime as long as it has enough feature points. So on the robot follow manager, make sure to put in the IP address of your node MCU in the send message script. When you open up this scene on your phone, put some kind of image in front of the camera and click the screen to initialize a new tracker. If the image has enough feature points, it will say image quality high and tracking will begin. I notice as the battery power diminishes, this tracking behavior slightly changes, but it will at least work pretty well uh, with a new battery. If we open up the robot follow behavior, you will see that this script just checks if the current image target is within a certain set of bounds. And if it isn't, it sends a message to the robot to move for one frame before stopping. This doesn't result in the smoothest behavior, but it works pretty decent. Now this last scene uses AR kit, so it will only work on iOS. But if we open that up, make sure to put in your computer's IP address on the send message behavior script. This script sends the name, position, rotation, and scale of the generated planes back to your computer. So this gets received from the map controller scene. In here, make sure to put the IP address of your node MCU in the send message script so you can drive it around with the arrow keys. I really wanted to make this mode autonomous, but I lost interest because my phone would not track ground planes in my apartment. The floors are hardwood and the walls are plain white, so I ended up going into my work on my day off, which I was not happy about. I work at this startup accelerator that has some trendy interior design with nice carpeted floors and brick walls, which actually track like a dream. So I spent a few hours there getting this to work, and then I called it quits. So that's it. Hopefully you guys like this project. If you want to follow along and build your own, I'm going to put full written instructions on my Instructables page. I'll link to that down in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and definitely check out our Discord group if you want to meet some other AR developers, or if you're looking to get some AR work done, there's a lot of good people on there. Also, I know I've been doing videos on pretty much whatever I wanted lately, but I do want to start taking requests again, so uh, if you guys do have any ideas on what you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments, and uh, hopefully we'll get some done in some future videos. So that's all I got for now. Goodbye.